To understand the process that led to the formation of our solar system, we first need to look at uh, observational evidence and the clues that lead us to understanding what actually occurred. So one of the things that we can look at is how objects in our solar system move and what some of those common motions are. So one of the things we look at is our planets and their motions. And we're very northern hemisphere biased, so this is a view looking down on the solar system as though we left Earth's north pole. And if we look down on the solar system from that point of view, all of the planets orbit in a counterclockwise direction. So Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, even Pluto, even though we don't consider it a planet, all of them orbit in the same direction. If we were to instead go off of Earth's equator and look at our solar system edge on, we would see that the plane of each orbit was pretty much identical. We don't see uh, planets orbiting vertically around the Sun, for example. And this one, which is the most tilted of our orbits, is Pluto. So uh, one more reason to want to exclude Pluto from uh, the planetary status. But everybody else is pretty much in the same plane around the Sun. There's, a, there's slight variations, but for all intents and purposes, all the planets are found in the same pancake-shaped region. Not only are the orbits similar, but even how the planets rotate on their axis is similar. Again, if we go off of Earth's North Pole and look down, we rotate counterclockwise. Now, this says most because there are two exceptions to that rule. Venus does rotate in the opposite direction, and that may be the result of a collision in its past. And Pluto rotates in the opposite direction direction. So there's another strike against Pluto. But everybody else rotates counterclockwise and orbit counterclockwise. Even the moons follow the same pattern. Our moon orbits counterclockwise around the Earth. That green didn't show up very well. Uh, so again, going off of Earth's North Pole, we would see uh, this counterclockwise motion. And again, we've got the word most in here. When we look at the moons of the Jovian planets, some of them do not orbit in the same direction. And that's probably an indication that those moons did not form with the planet, but instead were captured uh, they were probably a comet or asteroid that ventured too close and got captured and then became a moon. And so those are going to have more ra random motions. But the moons that formed with the planets do follow this trend. Even our sun follows this pattern. Um, the formation of the solar system is also the formation of our sun. And our sun's motion on its axis does, in fact, rotate in that same counterclockwise direction as the planets. So pretty much everything in our solar system follows that same direction of motion. So that's telling us that whatever we formed out of had to have had that rotation before the planets or sun ever formed. In addition to the motions of the planets, 
we can also look at their compositions to get an idea of some of the things that occurred as the solar system formed. As we mentioned before, the Jovian planets have a composition very similar to our Sun. And especially Jupiter and Saturn, uh, to a lesser degree Uranus and Neptune, the composition is almost identical, uh, especially the amount of hydrogen and helium. And so that implies that the Sun and the Jovian planets certainly formed out of the same material. When we look at the planets in order from the Sun, we see a definite trend uh, moving outward. The terrestrial planets, as we've already talked about, are primarily heavy elements. That's the you know, rock and metal. The lighter elements, things like hydrogen and helium, are much more rare on the terrestrial planets. And in the picture down here, it's not real obvious, but if we look at Mercury, Mercury, its core is mostly metal. Not very much of the silicate material. Uh, Venus and Earth, very, very similar. Mars, it's mostly silicate. So even among the terrestrial planets, uh, there is a trend with distance, uh, transitioning from metal-rich to silicate-rich planets. And in general, we see, as we travel past the uh, terrestrial planets, we get to the gaseous planets, and then we get out to where Pluto is, where there's uh, objects dominated by ice. So we have this general trend. Um, in closest to the Sun, you've got mostly metal and rock. Then you head out to the gassy planets with possibly ice in their core. And then the further out you go, you get to the objects that are composed almost exclusively of ice and rock. And that has everything to do with temperature. In closest to the sun, the planets that form there have to withstand those higher temperatures. So they're going to be made out of materials that withstand higher temperatures. As you get farther out, you're going to have more and more material that is in a solid form. And so out where Pluto is, uh, materials that we don't normally find as solids are going to be solid, and we call those ices. So ice doesn't necessarily mean water ice. It can be a solid form of a lot of different things. And those are found in those colder temperatures. So the temperature gradient that is produced by our sun dictates what the planets are going to be made out of. Another clue we can look at is how old are the rocks that are from the Earth and from the other planets. And for this, we're going to use radioactive dating. The oldest rocks on Earth are about 4.3 billion years old. And this is a picture of one of the oldest rocks found on Earth. Most rocks on Earth are not anywhere near that old. And that is because we have active geology. And so that active geology uh, covers up most of the older rocks and forms new rock. So Earth, um, it's tough to find the really old rocks because of the geology. But they are there in the non-geologically active places. The moons that were brought 
the moons, the rocks that were brought back from the moon, um, had a variety of ages. Uh, the youngest ones were about 3.3 billion years old. But the oldest ones uh, were close to 4.5, but roughly 4.4 billion years old. So again, the moon is not currently geologically active. Uh, it was in the past. And it stopped being geologically active about 3.3 billion years ago. So that's when the moon stopped making new rocks. Uh, but the oldest ones are roughly 4.4 billion years old. Meteorites. Meteorites are typically pieces of asteroids that have gotten knocked off. And when we analyze the ages of meteorites, the oldest ones are about 4.5 billion years old. So everything keeps coming in and this 4 point something billion year age. And so the conclusion is you know, everything, the oldest of everything, is coming out to be about the same. So that very likely tells us how old our solar system is. And so our estimate says that our solar system is about 4.5 billion years old. And there are other clues. Uh, if we look at the composition of our sun, uh, that's also another clue that the solar system is about 4.5 billion years old. So everything points to our solar system starting that formation process about four and a half billion years ago.